Fintech Chatter TV. Presented by Tier 1 People. Leaders in Fintech Executive Search. Welcome to Fintech Chatter, the show where I connect with Fintech leaders for a bit of a chat. I'm your host, Dexter Cousins, and in today's show, I'm joined by a really special guest, Bianca Bates, Chief Client Officer of Cuscal. Bianca was last on the show almost three years ago, and she did just such an amazing job of explaining Cuscal that I thought rather than me doing the introduction, I'd get Bianca to do it. Oh, thanks, Dexter. Uh, so yeah, uh, Cuscal, we are um, an end-to-end -end provider of all uh, payment services in the Australian market. Uh, we have all of the licensing and connectivity of the major banks. So there's the major banks and Costco who can effectively enable all payment channels in the Australian market. Uh, our clients, um, there's a, just over a hundred of them and they are made up of the mutual sector who were the founders of Costco uh, many, many years ago, uh, actually over about 50 60 years ago. Uh, and then we have uh, other banking clients such as ING and Bendigo, uh, as well as fintechs, corporate acquirers, paytechs. Uh, so we have a really sort of broad segment of clients. Your role as Cuscal Chief Client Officer, what, what does that entail? Yeah, so Chief Client Officer, uh, I lead our product and service teams. So we have five product domains. Uh, so we have uh, our issuing, switching uh, domain, fraud uh, payments, which includes MPP, as well as uh, CDR and acquiring. So I lead the product domains as well as all of our client facing teams. So all of our relationship um, management, partnership management teams, contact centres, operations uh, and sales. And how, how big is Cuscal in terms of people? We've got about 700 people. Wow. Mm. So it's a pretty sizable organisation. Yeah, it is. There's a, a lot of kind of or really rich history of innovation from Cuscal that when you know, I first had mm. you on the show, my mind was blown by the firsts that the, the organization is yeah. responsible for. Can you talk through some of those? Because not everybody yeah. watching might have, have listened to that podcast. Yeah. We do have a lot of proud firsts at Costco, uh, starting back in the 1970s, where uh, we introduced the first ATM to Australia, which was pretty cool. Really? Like, before that, people were having to go to a branch to get cash out Monday to Friday, whatever hours the bank was open. Uh, so it started there back in the 70s. Um, fast forward, we were the first to do a um, contactless payment in Australia, Visa PayWave. Uh, first to launch um, anywhere in the world, in fact, with over 30 brands going live with Apple Pay and the other pays uh, in the Australian market, pretty close uh, to first in the Australian market. But the world first was so many brands on one day. Yeah. Uh, then MPP, Pay2 going live first. Um, yeah, so a lot of proud firsts that yeah. we've um, achieved. As that enabler, um, what what is it that you kind of seen as being the biggest challenge over this last few years when it comes to competing with the, the big four banks? Yeah, so, I mean, we don't see ourselves competing to the big four. In fact, we're happy to enable anyone. Right. Uh, really, the problem that we're looking to solve is connectivity and capacity. Mm. So uh, we do have the connectivity to all payment rails and can enable anyone. Uh, so I think that's kind of the big enabler that we do have. So new entrants coming to the Australian market that are looking to compete, whether they're a bank or an acquirer, paytech, we can enable them. Uh, so I think the the, the um, connectivity is the first problem to be solved. Mm. Capacity is probably the other big one. So with our connectivity and capacity, we're dealing with all of the back end um, connectivity and enabling our clients to focus on the front end, yeah. which is exactly what the fintechs are excellent at yeah. doing, like that connectivity layer that's dealing directly with their customers, whether that be consumers or whether it be businesses. So we're managing the back end, giving you capacity to work on the front end customer experience. Mm. They're the really big things. I think the other thing that we've worked really hard on over the last probably three years as a big focus is time and cost to market. 
We know uh, as business cases get approved, as capital is released in into fintechs, they're looking to get to market as soon as possible, not wait years yeah. for connectivity. So that's another problem that we're looking to solve is being able to get to market as soon as possible with the most advanced innovative payment products uh, right. available. Okay. Um, and so you mentioned Pay2 before. It's obviously been a whole deal, not only in the media, but obviously within the industry around how slow the uptake has been on that. What, what's Cuscal been doing to kind of drive that and, yeah. and encourage that? Yeah, we uh, haven't been going slowly, Dexter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're really proud to launch, uh, to go first with Pay2 in the Australian market. Uh, and so we've enabled all of our um, banking clients, payers to go live, uh, I think with the exception of maybe a few. Uh, we've also proudly launched payment initiator clients, uh, fintechs, uh, paytechs, who are going to bring some really amazing, I think, innovation uh, to market as as all of the participants and all of the accounts are available. Uh, as you know, there's one major bank uh, live now. We're expecting all of the others to be live by March, April. So really looking forward to seeing some great innovation later in the year. Mm. Um, now talking about innovation, um, it's such a fast moving industry that we've seen just over the last five years, um, yeah, a, a number of ideas that have kind of been tried, executed, and maybe haven't worked out. And I think a really great example is um, Neobanks and Cuscal went down the path of building their own Neobank 86400. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the kind of thinking behind that and what you learned through that process and how it's kind of helped evolve? Because we're going to talk about a kind of a, another area, CDR, in a moment, but how that process kind of evolved the thinking to where you are now. Yeah, and, and I think learning is probably a great way to start that conversation. The reason we built 86400 was for us to learn as a payment provider what putting our capability in a digital bank's hands could bring to market. So, uh, you know, enabled with real-time payments, all of our digital capability as well as end-to-end -end payments, uh, we wanted to see what a digital bank could look like, what great looks like, uh, enabled by our solutions. So we really did approach that as a learning. Uh, what we did learn, uh, and, and also 86400 brought a lot of data and analytics to that solution. So really putting customers first, thinking about how they could utilize data to play up, play experiences to consumers mm. that were gonna make them more financially healthy uh, and help them live their lives, you know, every yeah. second of every day. Uh, so it was a huge, big learning. I think the things that we learned uh, was that uh, as a digital experience, putting everything together that we had delivered to them was pretty remarkable. You know, within minutes you could be onboarded as a customer, have a digital card issued and be transacting pretty much mm. within six minutes. Uh, and so we were really proud of looking at, you know, all the capability we'd built and how that could be played yeah. up. Um, so I think that was a great learning experience for us, um, I think one of the big learnings out of 86400 was getting the simple things right for yeah. consumers was really what they were looking for. Uh, and I, I think that uh, that that applies to Cusco yeah. as well, like getting the basics right is what's important to our clients, but also from a banking perspective, mm. same goes for that. Uh, yeah, continuing the theme of innovation, you made a big announcement just a couple of weeks back. Um, another you know, really good friend of the show, Basic, yeah. um, and a, a big news that you'd acquired them. Yeah. What was the thinking behind that acquisition? Yeah, so we've um, for, for many, many years now believed that the intersection of payments, data and digital ID all coming together are the enablers of a truly remarkable bespoke customer experience. Uh, we've thought that for some time. We did a study tour to India pre-COVID where we could see that coming to life in, in the uh, Indian market uh, with a lot of super apps mainly, but generally speaking, amazing customer experiences, helping people live their lives uh, 
in a much easier, more efficient, healthy way, both financially and, and all aspects of your life. So for, for many years, we've believed that the intersection of payments, data, digital ID could bring something really special to market. Uh, and so, as you know, we've very heavily focused on payments and have invested in um, innovation are now the leaders. Um, I think we're second behind CBA with volumes for MPP uh, and connect half, half of the participants in the Australian market. So really heavily invested in payments. We have gone live with a CDR solution that brings uh, some of our clients live for compliance activities for CDR. Um, but the, the kind of capabilities from a CDR perspective that are going to bring um, great experience, customer experiences to life is something that we thought would probably take maybe two years for us mm. to build uh, and then obviously attract clients. And so we went to market looking for the best solution that had been built. And I think there's no doubt that yep. Demir and BASIC have delivered the, Australia's leading data solution. So putting together Cuscall and BASIC, we think, is a really yeah. magical combination. I should say that whilst we have proceeded with that acquisition, Demir did choose Cuscall as well. Yeah. So, you know, he, he had uh, probably many suitors uh, and I think he saw the same magic that could be brought to life with payments and data. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a really great match. Yeah. It's just started, but uh, really excited to see what what we can bring yeah. together. So another thing that, you know, when it happened, I thought, yeah, this is like a, a marriage made in heaven is both Cuscal and BASIC are so committed to supporting the FinTech startup ecosystem yeah. and enabling those early ideas to actually get off the ground. So BASIC with, you know, free access to their API and any Body with an idea and a business yeah. can go and plug in. You know, Cuscal has been you know, really helping plug in the fintech startup ecosystem into the payments rails and landscape. Uh so I think uh, certainly with this acquisition, we see both organisations being able to provide a more holistic solution. So rather than uh, needing to go to two different partners to get payments and data solutions, BASIC will be enabled um, with Cuscall's capability and vice versa. Uh, I should say actually BASIC will continue to operate under Demir's leadership in their premises as their sort of team and Cuscall do the same, but we're obviously working on some really strong alignment mm. between the two organisations. So I think we'll be able to uh, utilise uh, access to the data solutions that BASIC have and vice versa in relation to payment access to um, the basic client. So I see it as really bolstering and strengthening the support that we can yeah. provide to fintechs and providing access in a way that uh, they may have struggled either way to um, get those mm. capabilities. Right. Yeah. We're going to wrap up now, Bianca. It's been great to chat with you and do it in person because yeah. uh, the last time I think so we were... So good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, through, through necessity because we were in lockdown. Um, but we get lots of founders listening to this show. If they're interested in what potentially how they could partner with Cuscal, what Cuscal can do to help them, yeah. what's the best way for them to find out more? Yeah, so... Um, yeah, please connect with me. Um, I've got an amazing team of people um, from, you know, new business, solution consultants, as well as all of our product domains who absolute SMEs. So reach out to me on LinkedIn uh, and I can connect to the right people at Cost School because, yeah, we're absolutely looking to enable the future through amazing organisations.